Enix Sears here, and in this short video, I'm going to be going over the stages of growth of an architecture firm and the invisible wall that many firm owners come up against when trying to get the firm to the next level, whether that means more time, whether that means getting larger commissions, and the symptoms of being up against this invisible wall are that perhaps you're running around all day, feeling like your hair's on fire, being constantly interrupted, not enough time to do everything that you need to do. You don't even have enough time to sit back and just think strategically about your business. Well, I can tell you for sure that you're absolutely not alone, that this is not unique to you. This is part of the natural growth of an architecture firm owner. And to be able to get past the stage that you're at, there's specific things that need to happen. And that's what we're gonna be going over today. So first of all, I pulled up my iPad here and I'm just gonna draw out these different stages of architecture firm growth so we can talk about them and how to get over them. So number one, we have the stage that we can call the freelancer. Now, each one of these stages is characterized by a very specific revenue number and team size. And you'll see why this is important because all of this is correlated together. So at the freelancer stage, the architect is generally earning anywhere from 5K to 10K a month. And, and the freelancer stage, what the freelancer will find if you're in this stage, maybe you just left your firm, maybe you're just starting your firm, you're working solo, what you'll find is that your number one challenge is getting enough leads or prospects, basically winning work, getting that consistent flow of work coming in. And because of that, you're, you're, you, know, you may be in the feast or famine cycle, you may find that your revenue fluctuates, you may find that you have cash flow problems, but by and large, your overhead is very low, so you're able to exist with very, very minimal revenue. So this is the solo stage. Now, the main focus that you wanna be focused on during this stage is number one, getting more work, And number two is keeping your clients happy. And as we know, this is no small challenge, but if you can su successfully start to bring in work to keep that revenue going, and if you can, you can keep uh, happy, happy, well, happy, happy, I like that, happy, happy clients, that's even better than happy clients, then what'll happen is you'll potentially, if you want to, move over here, let's make this arrow a little bit larger, to stage number two. Okay, and in stage number two, this is where you become for the first time an employer. At this stage, you're going to max out. You're going to max out at about $300,000 of revenue. And this is, it's just funny how this works. This is just a, a typical rule. So, you know, when you, have, when you have your first, maybe you have an assistant, maybe you have a person who's helping you with drafting, you're going to find that you're going to max out at about $250,000 to about $300,000 of revenue. And you're just going to kind of be, be stuck there wondering about how to get to the next level. And at this stage, your main challenges will be sales, leads, and then fulfillment. Delivery, making sure that the products are getting done on time, schedules are being met. And at this stage, you have a, a team of about one to three. That's about all you can do um, with $300,000 of revenue. A team of one to, to three people. This means one in addition to yourself. And then your focus at this stage should be ultimately quality work, making sure you're, ha you're, you're having very high quality work so that you have happy clients and focusing on that client service. So you have repeat clients coming back and word of mouth starts to happen. You start to get more referrals. Now, at some point, things are going to grow you're gonna start getting very busy and you're gonna realize that you need some more employees, you need some more staff, you need some more people to help you because you're totally stretched thin with everything that you can do in the day. And so at that point, you have the opportunity to move into what I call the seven-figure firm. Now the seven-figure firm, of course, is a firm, let's say they're earning anywhere from, this is total revenue, 750K for the year to about 1.2 million. And this is another threshold. So a lot of firm owners get caught here. Now these lines kind of represent these invisible walls or invisible barriers. And a lot of firm owners get stuck here. They never figure out how to get past to the next stage. And for small firms, this stage number three is where a majority of these firms, they, they end up and they never get past this stage. And a lot of them don't want to. A lot of them, look, you may not want to grow to be a $2 million, $3 million firm, and that's fine. But here's what happens. At this stage, stage number three, the primary kind of roadblock or obstacle for the firm owner is time. 
They feel like they're pulled in all directions. They're getting questions from staff. At this point, they have a team of anywhere from 5 to 12 people. And this, with this team of 5 to 12, they can generate anywhere from 750000 to $1.5 million. I have $1.2 million here in revenue. So that's kind of the size of firm we're talking about. Now, the majority of small firms in the United States, they fall in this range right here. We're talking about small firms with teams. This is the general size that we're talking about. And the, the focus at this stage to be able to – okay, so there's two things. Number one, some firm owners may want to move up to the next stage – which is where they're going to go up to $3 million in revenue. And this is where they have a machine working for them. So this is stage number four. And then I'm not going to talk about stage number five. That's where you start building out, you know, getting middle management and start building out like a real organization. Now, what happens here is that firm owners that are at this crossroads, the stage number three right here, they have, an, they have an option, they have an opportunity. Number one, they can streamline their existing practice to be able to free up their own time so they can actually build a business to suit their life, meaning they want to stay the same size, but they want to have more time for the creative work that they do. They want to have less stress. They want to have more profit. They just want to have a really well-running business that's consistent and sustainable. They're not always worried about the, where the next project is going to come from. There's not many firm owners that achieve that, and I'll explain why. There's the, the second option is at this stage, they can focus on growing. They can focus on getting that machine in order and then hopping over to the next stage and it just opens up all sorts of opportunities to take on larger projects, to grow a better team. But here's the thing, at each one of these invisible barriers, so right here, right here, right here, and right here, the firm literally needs to be reorganized. It needs to have a new genesis that happens. So imagine you're going down the road and you're walking. If you wanna get there, five times as fast, you're going to have to use a different mode of transportation. You can hop on a skateboard, you can hop on a bicycle. If you want to get there even faster, you're going to have to swap out that bicycle for a car. And if you want to get there even faster, you may have to swap out that Volkswagen or that Honda for a Ferrari or Lamborghini. And so this is the analogy that when we're right here, when we're freelancers, we may be walking down the street. When we're an employer, maybe we're riding a bike. When we're at a seven-figure firm level, at this stage, we're probably driving around in a car. But the idea here is that you need a new piece of machinery, that the whole business needs to be rearranged. And here's the key, is that what got you here to the freelancer stage is not going to allow you to be over here in stage number two. And what works for you in stage number two isn't going to work for you in stage number three. And what works for you in stage number three isn't going to work for you in stage number four. Now, what's really interesting about these different levels of firms is that you'll see a pattern here. This is called the tens and the threes. So there's a CEO by the name of Clayton Mask. He brought this to my attention. And this is this is across industries. What we find is that businesses kind of, they need to be redesigned every uh, multiples of three and 10 in terms of revenue. So we look at this here. So we can say, let's start right here. So we have right here, let's say, um, here's a revenue number. So this is about 100K. Okay, so there's our one. We get to the 300K, boom. Suddenly we're into a new stratosphere. 300K would be another level. And then after that, we're gonna move up to the 1 million. And so that would be the one. And then after that, we move up to the three. So you see how that works here? So here we have the one, here we have the three, here we have the one. And then here we have the three. And then after the three, of course, this is where you move up to 10 million. And when you hit 10 million and above, it once again, it requires a redesign of the business. Now, the reason why I'm recording this video right now, if you'd like, if you're at either one of these stages, number two and number three, and you'd like to understand how to get past this invisible barrier, or you wanna know how to get past this invisible barrier, I'm preparing a free training on how you know when it's the right time to hire the next employee. How do you really be sure that you're making enough revenue? How do you make that leap to hire the next team member and how that works? So if you'd like to get access to that, what I invite you to do is just to put a comment, right? Um, actually, let's do this. Send me a PM on Facebook. Just reach out to me via Facebook. Send me a little message. Say, hey, Enoch, I'd like to get that, that, that training. Send it over to me. I'll send it your way because ultimately, we want to get you to the point where you can get past this invisible barrier. Or if you're in stage number three, we want to make it so that you can actually have a life, enjoy your life, and not just be running around frantically feeling like your hair is on fire all the time.